Hello and welcome to another episode of Excel Statistics. Today we will be talking about the binomial probability distribution. This distribution is used uh, to determine the probability of successes over a given number of trials. Uh, so what we're going to be looking at today is the probability of flipping um, eight heads if we were to flip a coin ten times. So this is kind of how the distribution looks. Uh, you can see the probability of flipping zero is very small. The probability of flipping ten times is very small. And it goes up and peaks at five and comes back down. It's fairly symmetrical because our probability is 50-50. Uh, but this does shift depending on your actual probability that you have. Um, and also notice that this is a discrete probability function. It exactly four heads, five, six. Uh, we can't get four and a half or 5.4 in here. Uh, so that's why this is a discrete function. Uh, in order to calculate this, we need to know a couple of different measures. Uh, first, we need to know is our probability of success. Uh, keep in mind that this probability of success, uh, it really means the probability of getting the desired outcome, regardless of whether that outcome is deemed to be good or bad, uh, but it's called a success because we got the outcome that we wanted. So in this case, if we're flipping a coin and getting heads, we have a 0 0.5 uh, probability. And next, we need to know the number of trials that we will have. In this case, we said we're going to flip our coin 10 times. Uh, and lastly, uh, we need to calculate for each one of our values the probability of six, or the number of successes uh, that we had. In this case, we can have any number from 0 to 10. Uh, there is a probability that we can get zero successes, and there's also a probability we can get all the way up to 10. So finally, we will calculate our probability for each one of these. We will start like we do with all of our other formulas in Excel, and that's with our equal sign. And we're just going to start typing binome, and we'll see several options come up. Uh, we're going to stick with this very first one, binome.dist. Uh, older formulas in Excel might just have uh, binome. We're going to use newer ones. Uh, once we get to this point, we've double clicked this and we have this come up. Notice it gives you kind of the values you need to have. Uh, but if you need a little bit of help or reminders of what those are, we can go up here to our insert function button next to our formula bar. And by clicking on that, we get our function arguments window. I find this very helpful as it gives us um, the explanation of what the formula does, as well as an explanation of what each one of the inputs do. Uh, so for this case, we're going to start off and we need to input number S, which is the number of successes in a trial. Well, we have that labeled right here already. We'll just click on that. Next, we're going to go down to where it says trials, and this is the number of independent trials. Again, we've already put that in, and we will use our F4 key uh, to lock those in place. Uh, it will put the dollar signs in front of both the and the two. Third, uh, it wants to know the probability of success on each trial. We place that up here at the top at 0 0.5 and we'll use our F4 key to lock in the values with the dollar sign there as well. Uh, finally, it's cumulative. Uh, it's a logical value. It's true if we want the probability mass or if we want the cumulative distribution function or false if we want the probability mass function. Uh, in this case, for the binomial distribution, I prefer to just use the probability mass function, and so I like to keep this as false at all the time. Uh, what this does is gives us the probability of getting exactly that number of successes uh, that we have up here. And the, whereas the cumulative, if we were to put true, will give us the probability we get that number or fewer successes. But with uh, the binomial, since we can list out every single one of them, it's kind of easier just to leave it as false, and we'll do the calculations for the other values that we need. But okay, we see there's a very, very small probability there. Um, I'm going to grab this lower right-hand corner. I'm going to put my black plus sign cursor right there, and I'm just going to double-click, and that will copy my formula down to the bottom. And because I use the dollar signs on my probability of success and number of trials in there, um, it has the proper values all the way down. So some of the values we might want to know here is what's the probability of getting exactly eight successes? Well, again, since we did the probability mass function, 
and use false in our cumulative value, I can go down here to where our number of successes is eight and simply click on that. We got 0 0.0439 as our value. Alternatively, if we want to do the probability that we were less than equal to four, uh, we would need to write another formula that's a sum of zero, one, three, and four. Uh, those numbers will come up, and of course, if we are looking at a number less than or equal to four, that will include four. Full sign. I'll close my parentheses, and there we go. That simply summed up uh, all four of those values. However, if we want to looking at the probability that we were less than four, we would only need to grab value zero, one, three. Again, because our distribution is discrete. There's no values between three and four, so if we need to be less than four, we can go straight down to three as our next value. So that gives us a slightly different answer. And lastly, uh, if we want to look at a value, say, greater than eight, or let's change that here slightly. Let's do a probability that we are greater than four. Uh, in this case, we're going to want the values for 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. However, if we also notice, we can uh, click down here and do our auto sum function. We do have a probability of 1 uh, by adding up all of these. So because we know that that probability is 1, and we've already calculated the probability of less than or equal to 4, so of 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, if we were to subtract that value from 1, what we are left with is the same as summing up values 5 through 10, uh, which we can see down here on our bottom right that this shows 0 0.623, same value we get here. And that really gives you all the different options of how you would go about finding your different probabilities with the binomial distribution. Hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you for viewing.